Okay, whew, finally, <laughs> finally. This video has been a lot of work, but I'm excited to finally share with you guys the results I have. Which CPU is the better performer in Blender? The Intel i9-9900K or AMD's 2700? Now, this video is not gonna be like your typical benchmark video where you just grab a few cycles benchmarks and run them through Blender because cycles obviously benefits a lot from more cores. Instead, we're gonna be taking a look at everything else you do in Blender. So I created benchmarks for fluid simulations, smoke simulations, animation, sculpting, physics, and even real-time playback to see how much Blender improves with a faster core versus more cores because most of Blender's features actually aren't coded to take advantage of more cores. So for this showdown on the right side, we have the AMD system featuring the Ryzen 2700. I would have liked to feature the 2700X in this video as it's basically an overclocked 2700. Couldn't get my hands on it for this video though. So instead we're going with the $250 Ryzen 2700, which is still a great value. And on the left side, we have the i9-9900K. You guys might recognize this build from the Phantom Gaming video I did that was provided by ASRock with their new line of Phantom Gaming hardware. This is going to be our Intel system. Now, no overclocking was done on either of these CPUs, but both systems are featuring 16 gigabytes of DDR4 T-Force Team Group RAM running at 3200 megahertz speeds to give Ryzen the advantage of the faster memory as we all know that Ryzen enjoys that faster memory speed and has a bit more performance with it. ASRock sent over their X470 Tashi motherboard for the AMD system. I've built in many ASRock boards now and they're super easy to build with and been super reliable. I haven't had any issues with them yet. And so both systems are running the ASRock motherboard with the Phantom Gaming one, of course, running the Phantom Gaming board. Then for GPUs, as you might know, the Intel build is running the RX 570 8GB edition card from ASRock. And our Ryzen system is running the Radeon Pro Duo, which is essentially an RX 480, two of them in the same board. In this case, it's only going to be operating as one, and it's very similar in performance to the 570. So with our contestants ready to duke it out, also I'd like to mention that all the benchmarks I created for this video will be available to download in the description below. If you guys wanna benchmark your own hardware and see how it compares to the hardware featured in this video. Also, if you'd like to purchase any of the hardware you see in this video, I'll have Amazon links in the description below where you guys can check it out. And if you use those links, you support the channel a little bit. So that's very much appreciated. And then the last thing I wanna mention before we get into the benchmarks is that this is all being run on the Blender 2.8 beta, the most recent beta I could get my hands on before doing this video. So everything is as new as possible. This is what Blender's performance is at the moment. And these things are possibly going to change down the road, of course. So getting into the benchmarks, I want to mention that all of these benchmarks were run for the most part more than once, sometimes very many times if I was getting sort of odd results. So keep that in mind. This is pretty consistent results here on both systems. And then you'll want to stay around to the end of the video when I share some Linux benchmarks to see how Intel and AMD both compare on Linux. So that's really interesting. But starting with our first benchmark, we have a physics benchmark that I put together. This one is very single core heavy, as I noticed looking at the task manager. And on our Ryzen 2700 system, this one came in at 90 seconds to complete the simulation. And on the Intel 9900K, this one took just 70 seconds. So 25% faster on Intel, but keep in mind that the Intel CPU is also about 50% more expensive. So onto the smoke benchmark now, the simulation took 59 seconds to complete on our Ryzen system, and it took 39 seconds to complete on our Intel system. So this one came in at 41% faster on the Intel system. So the smoke simulator in Blender really focuses on single core performance, and Intel took advantage of that and had a nice increase with 41% faster. Then on to a fluid simulation benchmark, the Ryzen system took two minutes and two seconds to complete, whereas the Intel system took only one minute and nine seconds to complete. Now, like I said, I'd ran this multiple times as I was getting some sort of inconsistent results with the fluid simulator, and I took the average number from both systems 
for the result here. And as you might have noticed already, Intel came in at 55% faster on the Fluid Simulator. So after running some simulation benchmarks, I wanted to throw in a few real-time playback benchmarks to see which system handled real-time in Blender faster without getting laggy and slowing down. So what I did is I created a sculpting benchmark. This is a very high poly mesh being deformed in real time. And on the AMD system, the sculpting playback came in at 2.37 FPS. And on the Intel system, this came in at 3.1 FPS. So approximately 27% faster on Intel system for real time playback, giving you a few more FPS in your viewport. Then I moved on to an animation playback where I have a character rigged and moving around and seeing what kind of FPS you get playing back this animation in Blender's viewport. The Ryzen system came in at 15 FPS, whereas the Intel system came in surprisingly at 35 FPS. So whatever's going on in Blender, it currently runs a lot better on the i9-9900K coming in at about 80% faster real time animation playback. So that was really interesting. One of the most interesting benchmarks I thought out of all of these. So that's something to keep in mind if you're doing a lot of animating. Currently Intel seems to have a big increase over Ryzen in its real-time playback speeds within Blender. Then I wanted to benchmark one of the newer features in Blender and that is the Grease Pencil. So I rendered out the Grease Pencil benchmark. This benchmark is available on the Blender Cloud but I'll also put a link down there. And just rendering out these frames out of Blender, it actually doesn't really use GPU, but this is mainly a CPU core heavy task. So I rendered out the Grease Pencil animation on the Ryzen system, and that took approximately 10 minutes and 24 seconds. And rendering the same thing out on the Intel system was seven minutes and 44 seconds, about 29% faster. So a decent increase on Intel, but still very good performance on both systems. Then I wanted to include just one cycles benchmark to kind of give an overall view of the performance of these CPUs in Blender. So I took the newest Agent 327 benchmark, that was a splash screen actually in Blender for a while, rendered it on both systems. The AMD system took 31 minutes and 48 seconds, and the Intel system took 21 minutes and 47 seconds. So 37% faster running at those higher core clocks. Now I looked at the task manager as this was rendering and I could see that on the Ryzen system it was sitting at around 3.3 gigahertz all cores while it was rendering. But the i9-9900K without any overclocking was running at a 4.6 gigahertz consistently. And that's obviously why you got the much faster rendering times. Now the i9-9900K does run pretty hot. You're gonna need a bigger cooler if you're cooling that CPU as temperatures did start to thermal throttle just a little bit during this benchmark. But that's about it. That wraps up the overall benchmarks that I ran on both systems, kind of covering a lot of the different things you do in Blender. Now I took all of those results and took the average performance number out of that. And overall, the Intel system was 42% faster. So a very decent increase going from AMD to Intel, but remember the Intel system is 50% more expensive. So you are getting a lot more performance, but you're also paying for it. So it depends on what you need. If you need that extra performance and if you can afford it, go for the Intel. If you're working on a budget build or something, the Ryzen system is an amazing value, of course, still. So that's kind of my final consensus, but there's still more, guys. Like I promised at the beginning, we have the Linux results here for some of you guys. I'm gonna go a little bit quicker through these as I don't wanna to sit too long on them, but there are some interesting results here. As Blender often runs faster on Linux than it does Windows, as Linux is just a lot more optimized for CPU performance, than Windows. Okay, so I'm gonna go a little bit quicker through these and just run through the AMD list of benchmarks and show you guys the difference between the Windows performance and the Linux performance on our Ryzen system. So the physics benchmark was 25% faster on Linux rendering in just 70 seconds. The smoke simulation was 36% faster on Linux coming in at 41 seconds. The fluid simulation though, surprisingly was a bit slower on Linux coming in 30% slower at two minutes and 45 seconds. Some issue right now making the fluid simulator a bit slower 
on Linux. I know that the Fluid Simulator in Blender is not very well optimized, and that's why it performs so much better with a faster single core processor. This definitely hasn't been optimized recently, and there's been talks of changing that, but I'm just including that benchmark as it's the current state of it for now. The sculpting real-time playback was 41% faster, so much better real-time performance on Linux in the Blender viewport, and the animation playback was 34 FPS on a Ryzen system on Linux, so 77% faster in real-time performance animation playback in Linux with our Ryzen system. Now, this could always possibly be a bug with Blender, or it's possible it's a bug with Windows. Either way, right now, the real-time playback is way superior on Linux than it is on Windows. But then what kind of surprised me is our cycles benchmark for Agent 327 was actually 2.5% slower on Linux, and usually Linux is 10 to 20% faster rendering in cycles. So I also threw the cycles classroom benchmark at it in Windows and on Linux, and it was 10% faster in Linux, more like you'd expect most scenes are. So then obviously after seeing the performance increase from Windows to Linux, um, the Linux system was actually 22% faster than being on Windows with our AMD uh, setup. So then I ran Linux over on our Intel system again to compare to see if the performance increase was the same. And on Intel, our physics benchmark was 20% faster. Our smoke simulation benchmark was 23% faster. Our fluid simulation, now remember this one was actually slower on Linux for AMD was 4% faster on Intel, switching to Linux, which uh, kind of shows that maybe it's an issue between AMD and Intel right now with how it's optimized to work in Blender, drivers or whatever, not sure, but Intel doesn't seem to have the issues right now that AMD might have with the Fluid Simulator. Again, the Fluid Simulator, it needs a lot of work in Blender, so it could just be optimizations, issues and whatnot. The sculpting real-time playback on the Intel system in Linux was 32% faster. Animation playback was 44% faster at 55 FPS average. This was almost maxing out the benchmark, so getting a really impressive real-time playback with the Intel system on Linux. Um, then the Agent 327 benchmark was 4% faster on Linux than Windows with Intel. Interesting because it was actually a little bit slower on AMD for whatever reason, but it was close, so it could just be margin of error. But that brings us to the end of the benchmarks. I wasn't able to run the grease pencil benchmarks on Linux because the scene wouldn't open for whatever reason in Linux, but the overall performance increase going from Windows to Linux on our AMD setup here was 22% faster, and then on Intel, switching from Windows to Linux was 21% faster. So overall, it doesn't really seem to matter on the system. If you switch to Linux, you're gonna get about 21 to 22% faster speeds. There's so much difference between Windows and Linux that it almost deserves its own video. If you guys would like a separate video on that, let me know in the comments section below. But that's gonna wrap up the end of the video. So one more time, guys, the Intel system came in at an overall 42% faster. But again, the i9-9900K is about 50% more expensive than the Ryzen 2700. So it depends on what you need. I was impressed at how much faster Intel was in some of these things. But again, it's going to cost you the money. Whereas you can get a great budget option right now with the Ryzen 2700 and get really great performance for your money. So it depends on if you need the best versus if you're on a budget. Those are your options. But again, AMD is coming out with Ryzen 3 soon, and that's rumored to have much higher clock speeds. So it will be really interesting to test that when it comes out. Of course, Intel will also likely be releasing new CPU hardware later this year, and that's something will be interesting to look out for as well. But that's it, guys. That is the overall performance right now of the current hardware we have to feature. Ryzen versus Intel. Some really interesting things. I hope you guys have gotten something out of this video. Spent a lot of work on this video, so if you liked it, leave a thumbs up and share your thoughts with a comment below. I'd like to again thank the manufacturers that provided hardware to make this video possible. Huge thanks to AMD and Intel for sending their parts over for this video. And then I'd also like to thank ASRock and Team Group again for sending their hardware over to be featured in this video. Links in the description below, guys, if you want to check out the hardware I'm using. But that's going to do it. I will see you guys in a future video. Bye-bye.